We asked our viewers to tell us which board games they've actually been playing, old favourites, the newest hotness. We're counting down the games our viewers are playing up next in this month's People's Choice Top 10. Hello, I'm Matthew and joining me counting down the games our viewers have been playing is Paula. Hello, I'm back. I'm in California and you're in Taiwan right now? I am. That's all I have to say. I guess we talk about board games now. The first game at number 10 is Basket Boss. It's an auction game where each season you'll be responsible for managing all the complexities of a professional basketball team. Make sure you hire the right team advisors as they provide special powers that can dramatically improve your lineup if used properly. Competition is fierce, money is tight, and your critical task as team manager is to build a dream lineup of basketball superstars. I like auction games. And on to number nine. <laughs> <laughs> How do you feel about sports as a theme in board games, Matthew? I think it's great. I think you'd like this one because when you auction, you have all these different stars, which are slight parodies of real world mm -hmm. basketball players. So you're trying to bet on things looking for the future as well. And all the special advisors change up the auction. And it looks like a lot of fun, honestly. It kind of sounds a little bit like my favorite game, Modern Art. Yeah, it has a little tiny smidge of that in there. Let's see what Stephen F. has to say about this game. No basketball knowledge required. More strategy than I was expecting. I give it two. Ante to Kumpel's up. This episode was made possible in part by the new Interbellum expansion for Furnace from Arcane Wonders. Furnace welcomes you to the age of jazz and airships, steamliners and skyscrapers in an engine building Euro game in which corporate capitalists build their industrial portfolios by purchasing companies to process resources in the best combination possible. The Interbellum expansion introduces new company cards and capitalists, new abilities, manager tokens, valuable capital discs, support for a fifth player with new agents for two and single player games. Everything from the expansion can be added into Furnace all at once or introduced piece by piece. So follow the link in this video's description to find Furnace Interbellum now available on Arcane Wonders websites and local and online game stores. Harplum Maccas Victorum is next, a standalone title that uses the combat system from Harplum Maccas games while adding new twists with a focus on heroes and campaign play. Additionally, Victorum is a solo-only experience, much like my life, <laughs> offering an in-depth, rewarding adventure with deep strategic decisions and exciting combat to appease Pluto, god of the underworld, in order to prevent the world's destruction. Anachronistic timepiece, whose username before reading this quote made me think that this was just like the name of a new expansion for the game, if I'm real honest. <laughs> I was like, what? I also thought that, yes. There's sundials in the game now? Cool. But it's their username, Chip Theory. <sighs> I added in the crowd noise. Components are not content, but boy oh boy, when the content is excellent, excellent components sure add a lot. And Chip Theory are the masters. This game feels so good to play. And what a brilliant journey a campaign is. Also, you'd be terribly poor because there is luck of the dice. <gasps> Ooh. And we do know I have a dice curse. You do have a dice curse. I think you should just try it anyway. You know, believe in yourself. I do that all the time by accident. Up next is Skate Summer. It's summer and you're riding the sun-drenched half-pipes of Pelican Park. Locals know there's no ledge too high. No way. No rail too long. No mountain too high. Ain't no river wide enough. What's happening? The object of Skate Summer is to score the most points by doing trick combos, collecting gold tokens and visiting skater locations. But be careful, the longer you stay on your board, the more likely you'll bail. Fernando M says this fantastic game is becoming my go-to for game nights. Easy to understand, fun to play and cool art. It does have this like California summer Almost like graffiti kind of style to it, yeah. Yeah. And Timothy W says the push your luck card play that is meant to stimulate maintaining balance. There's no stimulating going on in the board game, what, Paula? 
the pusher luck card play that is meant to simulate maintaining balance while performing tricks is so well done. I can literally almost feel every time I bail. Good thing I was wearing a helmet. It's quotes like this that made me think there was an actual literal balancing component to this game. <laughs> no. Does this... Your goal in Super Mega Lucky Box is to score as many points as possible, unlike all the other board games. <laughs> and you'll do that mostly by crossing <laughs> off the nine numbers printed in your 3x3 three three grid on the card in front of you. During each of the four rounds, shuffle 18 cards, numbered one through nine, twice. How many times, Paula? Twice. For each number revealed, you cross off a matching number on one of your cards, with you starting the game by choosing three out of five cards. Each time you complete a row or a column, you receive the bonus printed next to it. And after four rounds, tally your points from the completed cards, stars, and moons, and the player with the highest score wins. Wait, the player with the highest score wins? Highest score, yeah. This is a break from the norm <sighs> here, yeah. So it is like that in every game or just in this one? It's almost ubiquitous, honestly, at this point. Yeah, I just, but I'm sorry. This explains so much. Smains says, this game has a name that's super fun to say, just like you were saying, and is also a super mega fun game to play. There's luck and strategy, both are concerned. With careful planning, your victory is well earned. Gabriel L says, fun little game, very addictive. And the way you just described it does make it feel like something that I might find addictive. Well, you love silver and gold and it has a bit of that about it. I feel like. I do. I do love silver and gold. Now that's a Phil Walker Harding game. But I also want there to be an app for Super Mega Lucky Box because if there is, I'll play it a lot. The Stone Age times were difficult indeed. These hunters, collectors, farmers, and tool makers. They worked with their legs and their backs, straining against wooden plows in the stony earth. Oh, that's lucky because the game we're talking about now is Stone Age. In Stone Age, the players live in this time, the Stone Age, collecting wood, breaking stone, and competing for food. With a balance of luck and planning, the players will not only survive, but also flourish and Flourishing means you win the game. Oh, I did not know that. I have an idea to pitch you. Go on, pitch me your idea. Re-theme this game to the Flintstones. Honestly, I think that would sell. I think we should ask whoever's in charge. Just the vitamins, people. And that's it. What does Gabriel L say about this game, Paula? Funny you were to ask me about that, because Gabriel L actually said something very specific about this game. I hadn't played this game in a while. I still enjoy it very much, but when you're tired in the evening, multiplying and dividing become a real challenge. What are you trying to say? Why did you vote for this game, Gabriel? What are you trying to say? You're like, I haven't played this in a while, but I have been playing it. But uh, you know what? It's kind of tough at night because my brain's tired. I appreciate that. And I agree. That can be hard to do at the end of the day. What is happening here? Stephen F., their quote is, I finally gathered a copy and it did not disappoint. Great worker placement for all ages and skill levels. Oh, that sounds so nice. The residents in our next game of Town 66 can't stand it when houses with the same shape or colour are lined up with each other. Each player has a hand of tiles, with each tile showing one of six house styles in one of six colours and patterns. The colour and pattern of the tile also shows on its reverse side. The game has 36 tiles in total, one of each possible combination, and try to build as many houses as you can while keeping in mind which house is in your hand can be built at the end. This sounds like a nightmare for my brain to keep track of what needs to be put where and what can and can't be built. And I can just imagine myself at the end of the game being like, oh cool, all I have left are houses I can't actually build. I realized it's it's reverse Quirkle. You know Quirkle where oh. you're trying to make rows of the same color mm -hmm. and different patterns? Mm -hmm. In this, you're trying to do the exact opposite. Essentially, you're trying to make sure that nothing is the same that goes next to each other. So it's very much a reverse quirk or kind of game. I think it would break my brain. Rob R says, the best small travel box game I've played for ages. It plays really well solo, as well as up to four players. It's like a bright visual version of Sudoku. Okay, I get the appeal. So now, Rob, you've maybe convinced me. Perhaps I should try Town 66. And if you like Sudoku, you should do what I do. 
get completely addicted to the game Minesweeper for about six months. That was a big time in my life. That was a big minesweeping time. I honestly thought I was going to join the Navy at one point. <laughs> In our next game, let's go to Japan. You are a traveler planning then experiencing your own dream vacation to Japan. These can't miss tourist attractions will have you bouncing between Tokyo and Kyoto as you try to puzzle out the optimal activities to maximize your experience while balancing your resources. The game ends when a final round in which you ultimately go on your trip, activating each of your cards in order along the way. So designer Josh Wood was planning a trip to Japan and then the pandemic happened, so his trip in 2020 was canceled. And he was like, well, I did all this planning. <gasps> what if I design a game where I reuse all this work I did so it doesn't go to waste and the game is about planning a trip to Japan? Genius level strats. And that's why this game exists. I think that's pretty cool. I do like the idea of turning a bad thing into a good thing, and Josh seems to have done that with this game. Jonathan L. has a quote for this game and says, at first glance, this looked like an interesting game. And then having watched Matthew and Paula's stream, as well as Monique and Naveen's playthrough, my self-imposed ban on backing Kickstarters was lifted, and I cannot wait to play this for myself. Cliff F. said that they love this game, played a pre-published copy numerous times, and also are backing it. Mm. Frost GT says, quote, because I really want to go to Japan. See? I think Josh Wood is going to owe Frost GT a plane ticket. That's how it works. That is how it works. True. Wait. No. Yeah. Cascadia is a puzzly, tar-laying, and token-drafting game featuring the habitats of wildlife of the Pacific Northwest. In it, you take turns building out your own terrain area and populating it with wildlife. You put the habitat down, you get a wildlife token, you want to put the wildlife token under habitat, but all that's so that you can get points because there's these gold tiles out, you want to make sure that you, I need some salmon. So I'm going to draft this tile, which gets me a salmon, then I can place the salmon over here, but then I want to get all these forest tiles together so I can score points for that. Oh my gosh. And there's an expansion coming for it, and I'm really excited because I really love Cascadia. I think it's a great game. I'm covering it in the news. Are you watching our news? You should be. I bet Preston E. watches the news. Do you? Do you, Preston E.? I might be late to the party, but I just bought Cascadia, and as a resident of the Pacific Northwest and a fan of tile laying games, this one really hits the spot. The variations on scoring options makes me feel like there's a lot of replay value here as well. Love it! Conlan Chan says that late to Cascadia but loving it so far, looking forward to the inevitable deluxe version, two bags, double sided coins, hint hint. Maybe Flat Out Games is gonna see this? I'm gonna create a game and it's gonna have real money as the currency in it. Brilliant. They are our Tolkien. Played this at four players for the first time, and I enjoyed it more than I thought I would. <laughs> Playing it at two or even solo is still a treat. I agree, JJR. J.R.R. Tolkien, the author that most sounds like a pirate. In Age of Steam, the cutthroat action is centered on the industrial powerhouses of the growing nation, Pittsburgh. Cincinnati, Chicago, and others. Age of Steam also allows towns to be developed into cities ensuring that no two games are exactly the same. Also, you can take a bunch of loans out in Age of Steam and lose by going bust, so don't do that. Andrew S. says, I played recently on the Sweden recycling map, which combines the joy of freight transport with the joy of environmental responsibility with the joy of Scandinavia. A lot of joy. For all that joy, sure was cutthroat, says Andrew. Look at all this alpine joy. Oh, I've, I'm, de I'm destitute. Great. Brian says, this is an all-time favorite. There are so many maps to play, it always stays fresh. Plus, the game is always tense and competitive. Brian doesn't mention any joy. No, Brian is b b beyond the joy. Brian's at the point in the game that happens with you and I when we play a lot where you go, oh my gosh, I'm so stressed out. <laughs> no one talks to you just for the next five minutes. I need to make sure I do the perfect thing, please. <laughs> Legacy of You is the game that has topped the list of what our viewers are playing this month. It's a solo only, fully resettable, non-linear 
campaign game in which you step into the role of the legendary hero of the Shah dynasty. Build the canals ahead of the impending flood, while also defending your growing village against neighbouring barbarian tribes. The game's campaign ends once you either win or lose seven games. JJR says, Got this in the mail a few weeks back and played back-to-back -back games of it in two days. Lost my first time, but immediately fell in love with the ease of getting this to the table and the very fun, albeit challenging, gameplay. Shim Phillips is easily one of my favorite designers, and he hit a home run on this. I mostly play solo, so this game is perfect for me. And Takume says a really solid entry for solo-only games, and you won't see everything in one campaign's play. The resource management and deck building make for fun combo-tastic turns to puzzle out how to win from the escalating barbarian invasion and encroaching floods. Drew A says, If I've learned anything from the last few years, it's that I like a good solo game sometimes, and this is a great one. Shim Phillips has delivered a solo campaign game with tricky decisions, an evolving story, and shifting difficulties. The art is fantastic and the gameplay is quick but engaging. Best of all, there's no virtual player. It's just you against the game. So you can spend all your brain power fighting the deadly flood. Steven Waffles, another excellent game from Shen Phillips and Garfield Games. A perfect solo experience. You are walking a tightrope between managing resources and townsfolk to try and hold back the flood and the barbarians. Even when you lose the game, and you will, often you still make progress in the story. And TJS says, recently received my Kickstarter copy and this game is a solo gem. Whenever you lose a game, you add in features that make future play slightly easier. But when you win, the difficulty really ramps up for your next games. That's the shifting difficulties the other quote was talking about. Such a great way to balance out the game for players of all skill levels. I'm sold. I think I'm gonna, can I get, this was a Kickstarter game, can I order it now? I'm literally looking it up. This, everyone has sold me. I think you really would enjoy this one for sure. And then you can teach me how to play it. And then I can play it on my own. That would be good. And that's a sampling of what our viewers have been playing this month. To join the discussion for next episode, follow the link in this video's description to our Patreon to find out how to pick the games featured in The People's Choice and to see the games on our own personal radars. Thank you for being here, Paula. Thanks for having me. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you over there. Bye.